Hello and welcome friends. Today we will discuss n queens problem which is a generalization of the four queen problem which we tried to solve using backtracking in our previous class. So, what is this n queens problem basically? It is a generalization of the four queens problem to n queens by considering an n cross n chessboard. You might remember that in the previous class we considered a four cross four chessboard with four queens and we had to place each of these queens so that they do not attack each other and we discussed a uh, uh, backtracking algorithm for the same. Now, today we will generalize this problem to n queens by considering an n cross n chessboard okay? and we have to find all possible ways to place the n queens on the n cross n chessboard so that they are not attacking. So, if you look in the slide we have mentioned one of the observations that we made from the four queens problem and we observed that let us suppose if this uh, S1, S2 and Sn is one of the solution vectors where Si is the column of the ith row where the ith queen is placed then we can observe that all the Si's will be distinct since no two queens can be on the same column. So, it, this observation is obvious. We can generalize this to an n cross n chessboard for n queens by considering the fact that we cannot place a queen in such a column which has already been filled by some other queen in any previous row. For example, if we have placed the first queen in the first column, let us suppose in the fourth row we cannot place the fourth queen in, in the first column because that has already been occupied by the first queen in the first row. So, uh, this observation is simple and we can program or uh, while writing an algorithm, a generalized algorithm for the n queens problem, we can uh, uh, check this condition while we are placing queens one after the another. We can remember which columns of the chessboard have already been occupied and uh, at each uh, decision when we are placing a queen in any consecutive row, we will verify whether or not we are placing the queen in an al already occupied column or not and then we will uh, simply omit that case. Now, the second possibility is that the queens can be diagonally attacking. So, how do we determine that? How do we uh, test whether two queens are in the same diagonal? So, this is the sub problem that we will be elaborating. Now, let us consider a chessboard. As I said, we will be generalizing it to n queens uh, considering an n cross n chessboard. So, let us for the sake of an example for the time being as you can see on the slide and let us consider a diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Let us consider the diagonal that is uh, marked uh, the cells are marked green on that particular diagonal. Let us number the rows and columns. Let us suppose we have uh, rows from 1 to 8 and columns from 1 to 8 as well. Now, one of the observations that we can make for this diagonal or for all the cells on this diagonal is that each element on this diagonal on uh, uh, let us consider a of i comma j. i here is the row number. You can write this is let us suppose i these are the rows and this here is j. So, these are the columns. So, we can observe that all the elements on this diagonal marked green have this property that their row minus column value that is any you let us take the cell here row number 3 and column number 4. So, row number 3 minus 4 it will yield minus 1. Now, if we observe any other cell in this diagonal row number 4 and column number 5. So, 4 minus 5 yields minus 1. Similarly, this also yields minus 1 so on and so forth. So, that is what we have shown on the slide. So, this observation that uh, if we consider any, any diagonal from left to right, okay, we can observe that each of these uh, uh, elements in such a diagonal will have this property that the row minus column value for such elements on the diagonal would be the same. Similarly, if we consider another diagonal as you can see on the screen, this diagonal has uh, the difference row minus column difference for all the elements as 0 and that is what we have uh, displayed there. Now, let us consider a diagonal from uh, top right to left. Okay? Now, if we observe a relationship between the row and columns for each of these elements in this diagonal which goes from right to left, 
you can observe that the sum of the column number and the row number for each of these elements on this diagonal is same. Let us consider an element for example in this in this case uh, you can see that for example row number 2 and column number 8 for this element here the sum yields 10. Now same property is shown by this cell ok this cell 3 plus 7 and so on and so forth for all other elements in this particular diagonal. Now another example is the uh, diagonal that is shown on the screen you can see the for this diagonal all the elements have the row plus column value equal to 4. So, based on these observations uh, for, for verifying whether two queens are on the same diagonal or not we have two cases one for top left to a diagonal from left to right and another case for a diagonal from right to left and for uh, a diagonal for from left to right the property that we will be using is that for any element on a diagonal from left to right two elements belong to the same diagonal will have this property i minus j equal to k minus l where i comma j and k comma l are two elements that we are considering on on the chessboard. Now, if i comma j and k comma l would be lying on the same diagonal from left to right then they will have this property that I just highlighted on on the screen they will have the property that i minus j is equal to k minus l. Now, similarly for a diagonal uh, from right to left for uh, let us suppose uh, if i comma j this element and k comma l were supposed to lie on a diagonal from right to left ok. Then they would satisfy this property that i plus j would be equal to k plus l. So, we generalize these two cases. Now, Alternatively, we can write the same thing, same same uh, situation. You can just have manipulate the signs and transfer the variables from right to left. So, alternatively, j minus l would be equal to i minus k for the first case, and uh, j minus l would be equal to k minus i for the second case. So, it is a simple observation. We can say that two queens would uh, lie on the same diagonal, be it left to right or right to left if the absolute value of j minus l uh, would be equal to the absolute va value of i minus k. This observation we have made on these two statements that we just observed ok. So, this is a general uh, case. Now, we can verify whether two queens uh, lie on the same column ok uh, by uh, remembering the column numbers that have already been filled and we can also verify uh, whether the currently placed queen. Uh, is uh, colliding or for, for example is attacking some other queen on the diagonal by checking uh, this condition between the current queen that we just placed and all other queens that we have earlier placed for example in, in the previous rows. And if uh, for any queen this condition is satisfied by the current queen ok then obviously we will not be proceeding with that particular case. Now on the screen here we have uh, provided a generalized algorithm for the n queens problem. I would not be creating uh, the state space tree for this uh, case because even if we had taken the 8 cross 8 chess board for 8 queens the state space tree uh, even through backtracking would be very large. So, it would it would not fit on the screen what you need to do is you can run this uh, algorithm dry run this algorithm or work out this algorithm on the 8 cross 8 problem on the 8 cross 8 chess board for 8 queens and you can uh, verify whether it works or not and hopefully it should work. I will just be describing how this algorithm is supposed to work. Now, we have divided this algorithm into two parts one is uh, the right hand side part which we have named as place and the left hand side part which basically performs the recursion for backtracking ok. Now, this right part as the as the name suggests we have named it place ok and it returns true if a queen can be placed in the kth row and ith column it would be returning this true or false otherwise obviously if it would return false if this placement is not possible obviously this is the portion of the algorithm which would be verifying whether uh, the two queens for example considering the currently placed queen and any other queen that we have placed earlier are attacking or not be it column wise or diagonally ok. So, we will we'll see how, how it basically works. Now, we are passing two parameters to this place function one is k k 
is the row number or the queen number that we are currently uh, trying to fill in and i is the column number in that row number that we we want to verify whether we can place the queen there or not we are using a variable j to iterate from 1 to k minus 1 and we also consider s to be a global array whose first k minus values have been set okay now s here is considered to be the solution array okay it would contain s of s of uh, 1 would contain the column number where first queen is placed s of 2 would contain the column number wherein the second queen is placed similarly s of 3 would contain the column number where queen number uh, 3 has been placed and so on and so forth so let's generalize we are trying to place queen number k in a column labeled i okay so for each of the queens placed so far k minus 1 up to k minus 1 we are trying to find whether some queen has already been placed in column number i so whether s of j so we are iterating from 1 to k minus 1 okay we are as i said we are trying to place queen number k but up to k minus 1 we have already placed them okay now where have we stored the solution so far we have stored in this array s okay so, so we need to verify whether we are placing the queen in an already occupied column okay so we have stored the column numbers for the uh, for the queen numbers here okay and we'll verify for each of the queens placed so far whether it occupies the current column i or not okay so this basically means if s of j is equal to i is equal to equal to i which means if the column number that we are currently considering has already been filled then obviously we, we cannot uh, place the queen there or we need to verify the diagonal case or if the absolute value of s of j minus i is equal to absolute value of j minus k okay what are we trying trying to do here as i said s of j we are iterating from 1 to k minus 1 okay why here if you can see i've already said that we are iterating from 1 to k minus 1 so for each queen that has already been placed okay where has it been placed as i said s of 1 would contain the column number where queen number 1 has been placed similarly s of 2 would contain the column number where queen number 2 has been placed and so on and so forth so at this particular point we are trying to see if this column number i has already been occupied by some other queen okay from i to k minus 1 so if this this is the case then obviously we need to return false okay if we need to return false false as you can see there now in in the second statement or we we are trying to verify whether the diagonal case uh, is existing or not whether the queens that the, the queen that we are currently trying to place at column number i okay here, as you can see here is diagonally attacking some queen that has already been placed as i said we are comparing this i with every queen that has already been placed or in other words i can say we are verifying whether the current column has already been occupied by some other queen came up to k minus 1 similarly we are trying to see if the currently placed queen at column number i for row number k is diagonally attacking some queen that has already been placed so this condition is uh, doing that particular task so we are verifying both the things whether the queens are attacking column wise or whether they are attacking diagonally so if in either case if either of the two is true okay then we'll return false so then we'll say that we cannot place the queen k at column number i okay whatever we are passing to it now otherwise if none of these conditions holds if neither the column is already occupied nor the currently placed queen is diagonally attacking some already placed queen then in that case will return true which will tell our calling function that the current choice is so far valid okay so we'll see how we are now calling this place from the main uh, main portion of the algorithm which is n queens we have named it n queens and we are passing it two parameters k and n n here is our size of the problem okay so n would be 8 in case of 8 queens problem and would be 4 in case of 4 queens problem and so on and so forth now initially we call this function or this algorithm initially would be called with values k is equal to 1 okay because we are starting from the first row and first queen okay and n here is let's suppose 4 8 or whatever value whatever the size of the queen problem 
Now this procedure obviously for, performs backtracking using this, this, this uh, function that we just discussed, this placed uh, function which verifies whether a move is valid or not. So for each we iterate over all the rows. As I earlier said in the four queens problem, we will be considering that the first queen will be placed in the first row, the second queen will be placed in the second row, the third queen will be placed in the third row. Just need to select a valid column number in its corresponding row. So we will we'll try to use that idea here. So initially k is equal to 1 and let us suppose n is equal to 4. Okay. So we iterate for i is equal to 1 to n. So i is 1 here. So we are calling place. What, what are we trying to find using this? Whether we can place the first queen in the first column or whether we can place the first queen of the first row in the first column of that particular row. Okay. Now if it returns true then we can proceed. So we can store this or record this particular move in this solution array. So for row number k or queen number k we have selected uh, column number i will record this. Okay. Now let us suppose we consider an intermediate call. So we are let us suppose calling uh, row number 3 okay, and call n obviously is uh, 4. So for 1 to n again we are trying to find whether queen number 3 in row number 3 can be placed in column number 1. Okay. So we have already so far placed queen number 1 and queen number 2. Okay. So let us suppose it yields true in this place yields true for 3 comma 1. Okay. For, the, for the sake of an example obviously if we have already placed one used column number 1 for the first row obviously this will yield false. So let us suppose we will say uh, 4 here. Okay. So let us suppose we have iterated for i equal to uh, 2, 3 and 4 and let us suppose we are calling place 3 comma 4. So we are trying to find whether, whether uh, queen number 3 in row number 3 can be placed in column number 4 or not. Okay. So let us suppose it returns true, this place function here returns true, we will record this value for s of 3 would be equal to i, i here is 4. So we have used column number 4 for queen number 3 in row number 3. Okay. So we will proceed now, if k is equal to n, what this basically means, this statement means is whether we have placed all the queens or not. If k is equal to n, it means we have we have placed all the queens. So we'll simply write the solution. That is what we are doing doing here. Then write s of one to n. Okay, this is one of the solutions. We are not stopping here. We might be try to continue to find other possible solutions as well. Now, if this is not the case, so let's suppose if we have not exhausted all the rows or all the queens, then we will have to find or using backtracking using the same uh, recursive approach as I uh, earlier said we are following a depth first search backtracking uh, solution for the n queens problem. You can, you can generate or you can write uh, a breadth first search uh, solution as well using queues. You, you do not need to use a recursion as, as I have used in this example. So uh, in the current iteration as you can see on the screen we have found a place for uh, row number k or uh, queen number k in row number k. If the move was valid then we will have to find uh, a column number for k plus 1th queen. Okay, that is what we are doing here. We are recursively calling n queens of k plus 1 comma n for the next queen. We will have to find the solution and this keeps on iterating till we have exhausted all the queens okay, till i reaches n and intermediately we might have published or printed multiple solutions if, if we uh, had found any. Okay. If there are multiple solutions to the current problem then obviously we will have been writing them along as we are finding other solutions as well. So I hope this is uh, very much clear as I said I have not shown the state space tree for this problem because as I said had I taken uh, the 8 cross 8 chessboard for 8 queens uh, still the state space tree would have been uh, very large. You can, you can dry run this, uh, this uh, algorithm and see how it works out for the 8 cross 8 chessboard and 8 queens. Okay. Now one of the important points that you uh, can consider is that the brute force approach for an 8 cross 8 chessboard or the 8 queens problem would require uh, examining 64 p8 possible ways to place 8 queens that is about 4.4 billion 8 tuples that we had to search. But the backtracking approach by allowing the placement of queens only on distinct rows and columns, we require the examination of at most 8 factorial, 
number of uh, eight tuples. That is about 40,320 eight tuples. As I already said, I'm, we are considering, for example, queen number one to be placed uh, in row number one. Similarly, queen number two, be, two be, to be placed in uh, row number two. We just need to find the column number. But that is not the case. Uh, all, uh, what I mean to say is the actual solution space or actual candidate space was very large. We, there could be uh, one of the move would be placing all, all the queens in this first row and uh, separate columns. That is, that is also one of the possible eight tuples that had to be generated. But we are trying to omit that by considering only distinct rows, rows and columns. So, this is uh, what we have done so far. Now, I hope this, uh, this uh, end queens problem is clear. You need to work out with the algorithm uh, for uh, maybe an 8 cross 8 chessboard and uh, so, uh, find the validity of the algorithm and uh, do some practice. In, in the next couple of lectures, we will be discussing some other problems and uh, try to solve them using backtracking and uh, later on we will see some other uh, algorithmic techniques as well. So, thank you for today.